Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Sabbath service, our message and theme is unity. And we're going to start by reading a scripture. And this is from the book of the Law of the Lord, chapter 4, verse 2. Thou shalt bless thy fellows and thy children and servants and theirs, and all who seek to learn the righteousness of God and the peace of his kingdom of thee, and all whom God has committed to thy care. I'm going to be changing the unity topic this time. I know normally I like to talk about the whole us getting along as an ecumenical movement, accepting other Latter-day Saints, accepting our fellow Christians. I want to be a bit more specific this week. This is June. It's Pride Month here in the United States. And it's a time when we focus on a group that has been severely marginalized, definitely here in the States, and I know throughout the world. And the LGBTQ community, there's a huge political movement against them. And it's sad to me because to me, it's not a political issue. It's a, it's a moral issue. We, as Christians, need to reach out and love all people. And it's so immoral that we have a group of people that try to actually make laws that make the very existence of these these children of God, they want to make them, their very existence illegal. And so I think it's very, very important that we as a fellowship really talk about this statement of inclusion. This month, I've seen a lot of people from the Brighamite sect putting up flags of their proclamations of the world. And, and I support that. If that's what you believe, put your flag out there. And, and, and I will sidebar and say I absolutely love the part of the proclamation of the family that supports transgender persons because it says in there that the way we identify as male or female or non-binary is from the pre-existence and it really opens the door to this idea that people can be born in the wrong physical gender for example a, a male spirit trapped in a female body we know that that's possible because we see people who are born with dual genitalia. And so therefore, this idea that someone could be born with the wrong chromosomes, it, it obviously could happen. This isn't a perfect world. And so I also support that portion of the proclamation of the family. The statement of inclusion goes a bit further, though, because yes, God does. It says in the fellowship scriptures that God defines marriage as one man and one woman. But it also makes it very clear that in the Bible, in Doctrines and Covenants, in Doctrine and Covenants, Doctrines of Saints, in the Book of Mormon, we know that family isn't just defined by one man and one woman. And so this statement of inclusion goes just a step further than that proclamation to the family and says, yes, we agree. We fully support one man and one woman. We also support one man and another man. We also support one woman and another woman. We also support polygamists. We also support group marriage. Now, to be clear, I am a heterosexual cis male is, is how society terms me. I, as I like to say, I don't have time to become a polygamist. I don't have the interest. I'm very happy being married to my wife. And so I understand how important family is and this war that people are trying to use American and global politics to destroy families it really really bothers me it's it's the exact opposite of unity because these people want to go and they want to say hey you're one man and one man or one woman and one and another woman or you're playing this family and they want to take away their kids they want to take away trans children from their parents I just don't understand the atrocities that, that these people are doing, trying to make these laws and politicizing a, a moral issue. I want to testify to you that you, I support your right. If you believe that you were born in the correct body, and if you're a heterosexual, then I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Could you imagine if I tried to? So I don't understand why people try to do the the same thing destroy families 
destroy personhood, destroy individuality, come away, come around and take away our freedoms and our rights as, as citizens, as people of God, I, I just don't understand it. And so because of that, Christine and Alan and I put it together, this statement of inclusion. And I'm going to read it with you and talk about it a little bit. It says, The Fellowship of Christ is a community of Christians worshiping God, loving all, and fostering a welcome, safe space where all of God's children can grow a personal relationship with their Creator in a community that values diversity of people and perspectives, equality in policy and practice, inclusion of all voices and visions. Now, I want to pause here because this is this is key. If we don't understand this, we're not going to understand the rest of it. Diversity of people and perspectives doesn't just mean that we accept the LGBTQ community and that we accept cis people, heterosexual relationships. We also accept those that don't like any of those things. If you're a gay person that thinks that straight people shouldn't get married, that is a diversity of people and perspectives. If you think that marriage should be illegal and no one should get married, and I have met people who believe that marriage should be illegal, that it's between the, the, the people and their God. You know, that's, that's fine. We welcome you. If you're a traditionalist that believes that, whether you are a same-sex couple or a heterosexual couple or what have you, that there should be a way of, of receiving a legal license in traditional marriage, because that's what traditional marriage, in my mind, is. It's when you go to the court and you get a document telling the whole world, hey, we decided to get married and uh, we, we want some tax benefits from that. Um, there's, there's a huge tradition in the United States of, of trying to get tax breaks. If, if that's what you believe, that's the, that's the diversity of perspectives. All are welcome here. So I don't want someone to think that, that they have to be okay with what everybody else is doing. What you have to be okay with is the fact that they're still going to do it and we're not going to kick them out. You can think it's wrong, but you can't make a policy to force people out of a unity movement. And so that's why we have equality in policy and practice. If someone says, I refuse to marry certain individuals, we respect that. If you only want to marry same-sex couples, you are welcome to do so if you're a minister in the fellowship. We're not going to stop you. If you only support polygamous marriages and you say, hey, if you don't agree to become a polygamist, I'm not going to marry you. You know, it's not my thing, but, you know, I, I understand culturally that it, it's something that we as a people have to have to work through. And I genuinely believe that if those people do come here, then, you know, they're, they're going to fit along very, very well with those people who are currently here in the United States and all over the world trying to make laws against such practices. Because, I mean, destroying the family is destroying the family. It doesn't really matter what angle you come at it from, right? So, we accept everyone. It doesn't mean that we all have to agree with one another. And that comes to the inclusion of all voices and visions. It's my vision that if you come here believing that other people aren't as good as you, that you are better than them because you do X, Y, and Z, I genuinely believe that as you work with these other people that you think you're better than, it's going to humble you and you're going to learn to love them. And I, I believe this because I used to think that way. I used to think that as a cis heterosexual male, that I was somehow of less sin. I was I didn't I didn't suffer from same sex attraction. I wasn't confused as to my gender identity. I had been taught that that I was superior because of these things. And then one day I was at a, a, a gathering of people my age. And I met someone and I was talking to him and he was really, really hurting in his situation. And the love of Christ came upon me. And I wanted everything to do everything I could in, in my power to let this child of God know that he was loved. 
he had moved in with his significant other. And I'm like, you know what? That's against my religion, but you're not a part of my religion. So I, I can't really say anything about that. Your parents decided to disown you because you moved in with the love of your life and you, without marrying them. Again, it's against my religion, but I can tell you really love this person. If that's where you are, I've got to love you where you're at. And the Holy Spirit just, just poured through me, teaching me this valuable lesson. And then it came out that that person that he had moved in with was another man and that he was gay. And then it all made sense. The reason why his parents were so violently against him wasn't just because he moved out. It wasn't just because he moved in with the love of his life. It was because he was gay. And this was back when the, the thing you said back then was, it's, it's my life and my choice. And he kept saying that. It's my life. It's my choice. I, I choose this for myself. And there's people now who get very upset with that idea that, that it's not a choice. And I do agree it's not a choice. But what is a choice is that this young man chose to follow his heart, to follow his conscience, and to be a part of the family that would love and accept him. And in that moment... I realized that I wasn't better than these people that I had never met before, that I didn't know. I realized that I needed to repent. And I wept with him. And I apologized to him. He didn't know what I was thinking. He didn't know what I was feeling. I hope he knows that through him, God changed my heart. And that's why this statement of inclusion is so important to me. Because I don't believe that we can grow if we only find people that are exactly like ourselves and stick to them like glue. Once you break Satan's us versus them mentality by learning to love, truly love, our neighbors, the way that Jesus taught us to. We begin to understand how God loves us. And that, it's just a multiplying effect. That just helps us to love more. And that love is infinite. It's just a matter of waking up to the reality of it. The statement continues saying, all are welcome to grow in faith with us without exception. We seek to create a community of unified backgrounds and beliefs drawn together through the love of Jesus Christ. We believe that diversity is one of the greatest gifts to come from God's creation. Through this unity and diversity, we gain greater opportunities to experience humanity and see a greater expression of rights and God-given gifts both in our churches and in society. This is the growth that I'm talking about. This is the growth that I experience and I want everyone to experience. We can't get it living in little shells. Social media does an amazing job of pinning us in and only letting us see the things that we believe and that we want to see. And there's no growth. There's no growth in the vacuum. The Lord has told us, as to thy call my fellowship to unite my people, I say, accept those that all others reject with hope, joy, and happiness. Doctrines of the Saints 125, 33. The way that we not just become, but are, by their fruits ye shall know them. The, the true church of God, individually, not as an organization, is how, by showing the world how to love. Satan has spent centuries, thousands of years, teaching us to hate. I do believe that the love of God is right around the corner if we will just grasp it. We have to have Zion in our hearts if we're ever going to build Zion for real. 
going and buying a plot of land and gathering up all your friends and everyone's exactly like you. The reason why it never works is because once you get together, once you unify in your group, all of a sudden you realize we're not as similar as we thought. And all of a sudden those little differences start popping up. And all of a sudden the hatred festers and grows until it falls apart. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of this happening. They blame it on one person trying to take the lead. They blame it on people just wanting to hoard things for themselves and being selfish. But in truth, the thing that destroys Zion every time is that they're trying to find it out here instead of in here. We seek to be a diverse people of faith, sharing in our differences in perspectives on theologies, understandings, and interpretation of Scripture. We covenant to accept, respect, and love one another throughout our faith journeys. Membership, ordinances, callings, and fellowship are open to all regardless of age, race, ethnic background, nationality, gender identity, sexual orientation, family or socioeconomic status, educational background, political affiliation, physical or mental ability, or faith history. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter who you are. What matters is whose you are. If you belong to Jesus Christ, you belong with us. It's that simple. We don't expect perfection from anyone. God met you where you are and saved you with his grace. That's good enough for us. That's our statement of inclusion. It's not about who, what, why, when, where, or how. It's about love. It's not about what you need to do. It's about showing up. It's that simple. And we don't expect you to love everyone out of the box. There's going to be someone, it might even be me, that you completely disagree with. But we want you here because we can't learn and grow without you. That's why inclusion is the Lord's way. So that's my Sabbath message of unity for you this week. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.